that uh, Julian Assange has basically been allowed to do a plea deal with the American government. Um, he didn't trust them enough to go all the way to America. <laughs> so he did it um, around the corner. Um, who is Julian Assange, by the way, for those of you that I don't know, been living under a rock, or maybe, who knows, maybe you just started following politics and you're 18 years old right now. The CIA um, were quite exposed, and a number of intelligence agencies were exposed from the WikiLeaks, which is an organization Julian Assange r runs. He released 500,000 US cables showing very confidential documents from the US and showing exactly what um, America was doing in the Iraq war, what triggered it, what um, uh, it actually exposed a lot of um, military personnel to potential backlash um, from what was going on. But he also highlighted the fact that in this particular story from the Express, um, the CIA was actually created by the US, the, the ISIS rather, was created by the US. Um, it was quite interesting because we, we saw Assange released um, he's been actually, again, guys, this is a developing story, which is why I wanted to go live today. This is happening very, very quickly. But essentially what's happened is he's done, he's taken this plea deal and he's on his way back to Australia now to Canberra to meet with his father, meet with his, um, his family, who he hasn't seen in a very long time. But he signed this plea deal. The timing of this is a bit, very questionable. Um, some are saying, like t I've heard Tim Poole say that this is probably happening because they want to basically phase... Um, the, the Biden administration don't think they're actually going to win this upcoming presidential election, which is a big call, and they would much rather tie this up now. Um, bar, and, and this is what this, this article actually goes through, they want to bar Julian Assange from getting back into America without permission, and obviously the bureaucrats will manage that, and the CIA and the FBI. But th this particular... Um, so he's on his way right now, um, and will be landing in Canberra in about half an hour. So we're all very eager to see him um, flying back from Saipan. Um, Stephen, you made the point that, yep, look, Julian, I respect that the fact that he's coming here. He better wear, start wearing a suicide-proof vest. The Clintons don't forgive and forget. You've taken a slightly different approach to perhaps, perhaps the libertarian view that, mm. that Julian exposed war crimes and, um, and you wrote a very big thread, which I didn't include in here. But w what are your, your thoughts on him? Yeah, I mean, if if I mean, I, I'm not a fan of Julian Assange, and I I never have been. Now, when they started dropping a bunch of things about the Clintons and their campaign in around 2016, I, I became ambivalent about him. That is, I kind of liked him, but at the same time, you see, here's the thing. So the paradigm case of of um, leaking information is uh, the Daniel Ellsberg case of 1971, where Daniel Ellsberg, an American man, who was a great American patriot had joined the army, a brilliant economist, PhD from Harvard, academic, went and worked basically in American intelligence. And his job was to figure out what was going wrong in, the, in America, in Vietnam. And he basically, with other people, put together 7,000 pages going through every decision the Americans made in Vietnam showing what they did wrong and how it could go, how it could go better. And what he found to his frustration was that no one was paying any attention to any of this. America was in a war. Mm. It was losing men. Mm. And so what he did was he leaked that 7,000 pages that he himself uh, carefully put together over years. He leaked it to the media. And the New York Times started going through it and publishing bits of it with editorial comments. If Julian Assange had done something like that, I would feel a lot better about him. But what Julian Assange did was see to it that hundreds of thousands, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, just in 2010, around about 750,000 documents, mm. so goodness knows how many millions of pages, on classified military issues and diplomatic cables were all put out there in the public, things that he hadn't read, because you can't go through and black out names of people in 750,000 documents. He basically just saw to it that it was all put out there for anyone to see, not because he had any deep concerns about America, mm. but because he basically hated America, he hates governments, and people's names were revealed. Mm. Uh, he didn't check to see, for example, if any informants' names were going to be revealed there. He didn't check to see if any the names of any spies were in these documents. 
He just put it all out there without even reading it. And so I see Julian Assange as a very, very reckless, self-serving man. Now, some good things came out of it, no doubt. But just because some good things come out of something that you do doesn't mean that, what, that you did it in the right way and that what you did was the right thing to do. No one would want someone, no one would want what Julian Assange did to be the rule. No one would want someone, when they feel that a government is illegitimate, and Julian Assange basically feels that all governments are illegitimate, he's pretty much an anarchist, no one would want people like that just dumping hundreds of thousands of documents out there for anyone to see because they don't believe governments should have any secrets. Well, the Associated Press, not a right-wing um, media, uh, uh, media, media corporation, in 2016, they went through many of the WikiLeaks files, found uh, that there were all sorts of very private information in them with names that weren't redacted, women who had been raped, their names were put out there. Mm. A man who was, who was uh, charged with homosexuality in Saudi Arabia, his address, his name, his telephone number was in these documents, unredacted, all out there. Mm. What Julian Assange did was very reckless. I think he did the wrong thing. And I, I'm not a fan of this guy. Right. Craig, what did you think? What did you think Look, I think that there's been a real turnaround in the public perception of this. Right. Especially um, if we go back to the start of the Iraq war, I think you know, most of us were supporting of America. We mm. thought America was doing the, the, the right thing. Yeah. But we've seen through what Assange leaked out that they weren't. Mm. And that has really damaged America's reputation and probably right. And what we've seen, especially during the COVID era, where the government is lying to us repeatedly, Right, for their own advantage and for big corporations' advantages. That's where I think the public perception has turned around. There should be more transparency on what government is doing, not less. I think that's why Assange has the majority support uh, of Australians. He's been locked up uh, for a long time. Look, and I'm, I'm glad to say I got to know uh, his father, uh, John Shipton. Uh, we spent some time together at some of the um, over in Perth, and I got to meet him and talk with him. Look, and I, I'm, I'm glad that he's. I'm glad that he's finally home. He, he, he would not have been able to get a fair trial, what we, especially what we've seen with what they did to President Trump and are still doing to President Trump. Mm. You cannot get a fair trial in the US. So he shouldn't have been extradited to a country where you can't be guaranteed a fair trial. And sadly, that is the state of the American courts at the moment. So for that reason alone, I think, you know, look, look you know, really glad that he's back. Yeah, Natalie? Uh, well, I, I think, look, Stephen, you have a point. You've got a very valid point. I do agree with some of the things. But the thing is, does the crime fit the actual punishment? And I, I do believe that the freedom of the press is there isn't any. And we know with the Trusted News Initiative and the kind of rubbish that we are actually fed and that journalism is very, very scared in um, revealing a lot of the things that are supposed to be really revealed and should be revealed. We, we now do know that America went into Iraq. We know Afghanistan probably shouldn't have happened. Um, and America's been in a lot of wars where perhaps they shouldn't have been. Um, and the other thing is, yes, the Clintons were were actually exposed, which is a wonderful thing. And I, I know, agree. yeah, Gateway Pundit uh, revealed that Hillary Clinton was heard as saying, "Why don't we just drone Julian Assange?" And then, when she was asked by a reporter years later, that that was actually in 2016. Years later, she was asked by a reporter, and she basically said, "I don't recall." So, when you don't recall, does that mean you didn't say it? Uh, it it's really quite disturbing when. People like the Clintons have a lot of people dropping dead who go against them. Like, you know, they disappear or commit suicide or hang themselves or whatever else have you. Uh, I just don't think that his crime deserved the punishment he got. And I'm glad that there was a documentary like The Trust Fall, which I did see, which I think was a very good documentary, which helped to bring his plight to the world. And the more people that know about things that are going on in the world, the better for everyone. Yeah, I mean, I have no objections to him being released and I sort of took no joy in him being incarcerated, particularly in that particular prison. That's just what really I find a bit dismaying is the hagiography around this guy. He, he is basically now St. Julian. And I just, I think when you look at the full picture, uh, I don't think that that really makes a whole lot of sense. So again, I think sort of the paradigm case that, that everyone kind of goes back to is, is Daniel Ellsberg, who was very surgical about what he did. 
Like he didn't just think, you know, the U.S. shouldn't be in Vietnam. I'm going to release hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of military documents um, uh, completely um, indiscriminately, not redact names, and, and basically just cause chaos to the American system. That was not his response. He, had, he saw a problem. America wasn't learning. He had a document teaching America every step where it had gone wrong. The man was a genius, and he was a, a highly educated genius. Assange is, has, probably has a genius IQ, but he has in no ways, doesn't seem in any way, way to have sort of disciplined his mind through proper study. Mm. This guy had. And so he released this document. He knew what was in it. It was surgical. It was targeted to a particular issue. So what Assange did and what Daniel Ellsberg did are two very different things. And to my way of thinking, we need to talk about the two cases very differently. But having said that, um, he's free. Uh, that, that, and that's fine. I, I, have no, I have no problem with that. Um, but again, I, I don't know that you want a lot of... I, do, do we want more Daniel Ellsbergs? Sure. I'd, it would have been nice to have a Daniel Ellsberg Absolutely. during COVID. But did you want someone who was so angry at the Australian government during COVID? How would you have felt if they decided, oh, I'm just going to release hundreds of thousands of documents indiscriminately showing people's medical records? Well, interestingly, neither option worked to teach any government anything. Sure. OK, well, I mean, the argument there would be that you should never do it then. Oh, no, 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 no. No, that would be the. <laughs> I don't, I'm not. I'm yeah. not making that as an argument. I just think that when you've got a government, it didn't matter who released what. The governments aren't paying attention. Well, you know, Craig made. A, Craig did make a good point that uh, you know, and I think he's absolutely right. Assange and WikiLeaks did have quite an impact on broad public opinion, and, and probably in the sense that, look, we were we were all around at the time. I was a supporter of going into Afghanistan and I was a supporter of going into Iraq. I now think in hindsight, going into Iraq was a big mistake. Um, I, I think we were misled by bad intelligence. I think a, a, an, inc an incredible book came out at the time called Saddam Defiant, written by Richard Butler, who was the head of UN weapons inspections. And it's an amazing book and I never hear about it, but he, he, he went through all the weapons inspections that he did in Iraq. And what he, what he pointed out was, is that at not one point did Saddam Hussein ever grant them a proper inspection of any warehouse. And even at some points, he seemed to toy with them by making them wait, you know, 500 metres away from the warehouse and then watching, make them watch trucks come out with missile-shaped things on them going into the distance and then they'd be led into an empty warehouse. Mm. And he said, you know, we had good reason to think that we should have gone into Iraq, that he was hiding weapons of mass destruction. In hindsight, what probably Saddam did was just trying to create a, a sense that he was more powerful than what he was, and it completely backfired on him. Um, that might have been ultimately what happened. Um, but, yeah, but I think a lot of people who instinctively knew that or thought there was something wrong about going in, what, what WikiLeaks did for them, it sort of gave them more of the substance that they needed to say, ha, see... So I, I do think that he had, he, he's obviously had a massive impact on popular opinion. I, 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 I could not deny that. Yep. And like I said, in, in 2016, I almost liked the, the guy. I almost liked the guy. Mm. Yeah. Look, I think it's a really interesting, um, you know, discussion around this. I definitely think he could have done, done it much better. Um, but I think as you, you know, may have said in the past, we can't allow the, the perfect become the enemy of the good. And I think w what he's done with regards to the um, yeah, you like you like that one <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but but I also I, I do think that um uh, I personally don't feel like I've read up and up on, on this topic I think I've heard people in the past say look he didn't act he actually was a lot more um, there were people that did release things indiscriminately but he himself he actually um, there were things that he was very selective on that didn't compromise missions and people but again i'm not across that as well as i'd like to be um but again i, I think the net good is from what julian assange has done i think the idea that you know the um the hundreds of thousands millions of people that d died in those wars and continue to die in the wars today it, it's highlighted a huge light on this military industrial complex, which is, it's a money making machine. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. It's about this, you know, revolving just like in, in Australia, 
which we're going to get to later about the revolving door between public then private sector. In America, it's the defense industry. That's the biggest one. And that revolving door between these organizations like Raytheon and uh, all of those arms producers. BlackRock. BlackRock. Yeah. You know, it's a business model. The way that they, they, they destroy these countries. I mean, the, the reason there's so many guys like that, that have my eyebrows here is because, <laughs> is because the countries we came from just got systematically out, uh, destroyed from the outside. I that's, agree with you there, yeah. And th that's why I have these these stone animals around me, guys. I don't know if you've noticed before, but these stone animals, I didn't just put them here because it was the theme of the ark. It's actually because um, Zimbabwe was another story, where the, which is where these things were made, where they were destroyed from the outside. And they did have outside influences that, that basically let, let the uh, Zimbabwean people down. But that's a story for another day and another podcast. But... um. We are going to try and um, – I could debate this this forever, and I definitely want to inform myself more on this. We're going to try as best as possible to stay on the news and see when he's actually landing. I want to get you guys the shot of when he's actually landing and greeted by his, his father, John Shipton, who um, Craig's met before. And, um, yeah, that, that's going to be with very soon, very soon, within the, within the next probably half an hour. But moving on on 